what would you do if all of a sudden your RV stopped starting regularly and consistently in the morning? Would you panic? Would you just take it immediately to an RV repair shop, even if you had other things to do? Well, that was what happened to me recently. My friend Christy was with me on a little road trip and my RV stopped starting consistently every morning. We ran into some really cold weather. It was like October and it was unseasonably cold everywhere I went. The nights got down into the 30s and the teens and my uh, engine just wouldn't start. It did eventually, so I wasn't completely dead in the water. Uh, it just took more tries than it normally did and it kind of made me a little nervous. So today I'm gonna talk to you about what do you do if you run into a situation like that and all of a sudden your RV is acting up and you're not really sure, should I take it in? Should I not take it in? I'm gonna share my story with you about what happened and I'm also gonna sh show you how to do something that might help you troubleshoot what your problem is and also just kind of help you understand your RV a little bit better. So stay tuned for that. There ain't nobody gonna do it for you. Hello all you beautiful friendly people, otherwise known as friendlies as I like to call you. My name is Carolyn and I live full time in a class C RV. And sometimes that means that I run into some mechanical problems as I did recently when I was well, with my friend Christy on my way to Reno. But today I'm gonna to kind of finish the story that I started in the video last Sunday. And if you didn't see that video about my trip to Reno, you might wanna check it out here. It was a lot of fun, but uh, I'm gonna pick up where I left off on that story because it kind of didn't fit into that video. And this is a separate lesson. And what happened is I had picked up my friend Christy and we were driving to Reno. We were gonna spend about three or four days on the road. So it was a little road trip. And of course, you know, I'm with a friend. I didn't wanna to have to spend a day in an auto repair shop but what happened is the first morning I think it got down into the 30s and I've been in cold weather I was up in the weather I think in the low 30s up in Oregon and I had no problems with my RV it started right up when I needed to go well uh, we were we were in the Bay Area and it got cold and I went to start my RV in the morning and it it turned over but it just wouldn't go and I'm and I noticed I was stepping on the gas and stepping on the gas because it just felt like it wasn't getting gas like something wasn't wasn't catching like something wasn't sparking <laughs> it turned over so it wasn't like dead in the water it turned over something just felt like it wasn't catching and i suspected it was a fuel issue uh it just felt like like something was clogged it just felt like something just wasn't going you know can't explain it any better than that that's my my official uh, uh assessment of the situation and eventually i just i, I kept tr i think i had to try it like two or three times kept giving it gas and it didn't flood so that was sign number one that you know that there was a fuel issue but i kept giving it gas until finally it there was like a pop and it turned over it almost sounded like a backfire it happened so fast but i was like christy was outside and i was like that sounded like a little bit of a backfire and she said yeah and there's a huge cloud of black smoke coming out of your tailpipe and uh, so i was like okay i i started it let it run for a couple minutes turn the engine off because we were still in civilization we were still in the bay area turn the engine off and turned it back over and it turned over just like that so i was like okay well it's turning over really good again so it's fine for now i'm not going to worry about it yet i will see We'll see how the day plays out, knowing that, you know, getting out of the Bay Area, if anything did happen, I have roadside assistance. If anything did happen, I'd be able to call roadside assistance and knowing that we'd be making multiple stops along the way. So throughout the day, every time we stopped, I'd get in, turn the engine and it would start right up. So I was like, okay, so there's something going on when it's cold. Don't really know what that is, but I'm not really gonna worry about it because it seems to be okay. Well, the next morning, I had a, it, it was a rough start again. It wasn't as rough as it was the first morning. And I think it was even colder that second morning. It was a rough start. I had to like keep the, 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 keep the um, key cranked and give it a lot of gas, but it eventually went. I think after two tries, it went the next day. I'm like, okay, 
not great, but it's still not cause for alarm. So I'm gonna continue the road trip. Same thing, throughout the day, once it was warmed up, it would start right up. So at that point, we were heading deeper into um, more remote areas and I really didn't wanna deal with a breakdown. So I went to the internet, I went to Google and Googled what some of the problem, what the problem might be. And everybody said battery. I didn't think it was the battery because it was turning over, but everything I read said cold weather, rough start equals battery. So I was like, okay, well, I wanted it to be the battery, right? Because that's the easiest solution. That's the easiest thing that I could possibly fix, right? A hundred dollars and put a new battery in super easy, 150, whatever it is. And so I was like, okay, well, when we get to Reno, you know, at the end of this little road trip in a couple of days, I'll go to an auto parts store and I will get my battery checked and see and hope, hope, hope it's my battery. I hope it's my battery. It's super easy fix, right? So the next morning we wake up and it was, it had gotten down into the twenties. Same thing. It was a rough start, but it did start. I, so we were able to head to Reno. Once we got to Reno, I went to like Riley's Auto Parts store. And in case you don't know this, like the uh, O'Reilly's Auto Parts and the uh, Cragen, do they even have Cragen? But the big auto parts store will often have somebody inside the store who can help you with simple things like to check your battery. Uh, put windshield wiper blades on for you. I bought windshield wiper blades at one and the, the, the little clamps, man, I was out here for a half hour. I was like, nope, I can do it myself. There's, there's a, something uh, weird about the clamp. It's like counterintuitive to how it should go, but, or something like that. But then eventually I had to go in and say, can you help me with this? And so they will help you with, with little things. So I went in and the guy that they have uh, who can come out and check batteries and stuff for you was really busy. He was working with another woman. And I was like, okay, well, can you check my battery for me? He said, yeah, but as soon as I'm done with this other woman. And so I kind of hung around for a few minutes and then I was like, well, you know, it, it didn't look like he was wrapping up anytime soon. So I went back and sat in my rig. And I noticed though, before I left, that he was carrying one of these around, a multimeter. I'm like, why didn't I think of that, <laughs> right? So I grabbed my multimeter and checked my battery and it, it read like 12.6. And I was like, well, that's weird. It shouldn't be reading 12.6. It's a 12 volt battery. It shouldn't be reading 12.6 if there's a problem with it. That means it's charged. That means it's, it's healthy. It's at 12.6. And I'm like, shoot, you know, that sinking feeling in my gut. I'm like, oh, so it's not the easy solution. What's it gonna be? And but I waited for him to come out. He pulls out his multimeter. He puts, he puts it on my battery and I look over his shoulder and he gets 12.6. And I'm like, okay, cool. That's what I got. So it's not my battery. And he said, well, let's turn on the engine. So I went in, turned on the engine and he goes, your alternator shot. I'm like, really? He's like, yep, you need a new alternator. And um, I was like, wow, bummer. Really? That doesn't sound right. It didn't seem to make sense to me. If it was the alternator, it wouldn't start, period ever it wouldn't just not start on cold mornings the fact that it was not starting very well in the morning but was starting firing right up the rest of the day just didn't sound like an alter an alternator to me i don't know you me mechanics out there might have a, a different take on that but that's my experience the alternator is what charges your battery right anyway i'm not a mechanic i'm just telling you my experience it didn't seem to me that the alternator was right and of course i've got christy with me she needs to go to the airport that day so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna you know spend the last day with her sitting in an auto repair shop so i asked the guy at o'reilly's i was like well do you know an auto shop around here who can take a rig my size and work on it and he said yeah right next door so i i went next door planning on making an appointment for later in the afternoon to get the alternator replaced after I dropped off Christy. I said, the guy in O'Reilly told me I need a new alternator. So can you get me in this afternoon to get an alternator? And he said, ah, let me see what you've got. He said, what's your problem? And I told him the problem it's not starting in the morning. So he, he put the multimeter on, he got 12.6. He told me to start the engine put the multimeter on, got 14.6. And he's like, there is nothing wrong with your alternator. Look at you, you're getting 14.6. Your alternator is charging your battery. There is nothing wrong with your alternator. And he's like, so what's your problem again? What's, what's, the, what's the rig doing? And I told him and he said, you know what? I think it's, I think it's something, I think it's your fuel pump. And he said, I want you to do this tomorrow morning. Before I bring you in to look at it, I want you to try this tomorrow morning. 
turn the key, not all the way, don't start the engine, just turn the key, one, two, turn it back, turn the key again, one, two. Then try to start your engine. He said, if that works, then it means the regulator valve in your fuel pump is bad and the pressure is getting leaked out or something in the cold weather so it's not opening and closing the way it should in the cold because of the pressure so you're not getting fuel which is what i said i knew it was a fuel problem so you're not getting the fuel to your engine first thing in the morning he said but what you can do he said if you just turn on your engine it should kind of wake it up pressurize that compartment again where the valve is I know you mechanics are going to rip me apart for this because I'm totally paraphrasing and going on memory what this guy told me. But that's what he said. He said the valve and the pressure was just preventing the uh, fuel from getting into my, my fuel line. And it was only happening in the morning because of the cold and the pressure and th things were just kind of freezing and not working the way they should. So I'm all hopeful, you know, and I go the next morning and I'm like, please, 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 please. The next morning I'm like, please, please, please. <laughs> Please, please, please. <laughs> and it started pretty much right up and I was like yes yes and so for the rest of the time uh, that's what I did through the cold weather when I was coming down south and it was unseasonably cold everywhere I went when I got up in the morning I would just go one one two one two and start it up and i never had that problem again so i just thought i would share that with you in case it just might be another thing that you can do to troubleshoot if you start having problems starting your rig in the cold and you're noticing it especially on the cold mornings that might be something that you can you can do to troubleshoot and figure out what might be the problem so i asked him uh, is this something I should fix right away? If it, even if it does start up, that means that there's a problem with the valve inside the fuel pump. And is that something that I should come back and get fixed? And he's like, well, that's a big job. We have to pull the gas tank to get to the fuel pump. And that's like a minimum of $750. And I was like, well, am I going to get stranded sometime out in the middle of nowhere? He's like, <laughs> I'm like, okay, great. You know, great. That means I could but I've had zero problems with it, zero problems with it since. So, uh, I don't know. That's, that's just, that's my, um, that's my experience. And I just wanted to share that with you. I just also want to share with you how to check your own battery. So that's what I'm going to do today. Show you how you can check your own battery so that you don't have to go to O'Reilly Auto Parts and have them give you misinformation based on i don't know what his information I, I maybe he had his meter set on the wrong thing i don't know or maybe he just wanted to get rid of me quickly because he was busy I, I don't know but i don't know how a professional in an auto parts store could make such a big huge mistake like that and that's why i think it's so important for women to know the basics of how your rig works how your truck works how your car works how your rv works and i uh and I just shot a video about how to maintain your RV so that you make sure stuff you know, stays healthy and you can try to avoid some of the issues you might have from um, neglect. And uh, stay tuned because that video is coming out in a couple weeks. So you might want to hit the subscribe button now because you won't want to miss that very informative for everybody but especially i think women who aren't used to tinkering with cars you're not going to want to miss it but i did i, I wanted to share this video and i share this experience with you in a separate video because i think it's a learning experience for all of us um well, it was a learning experience for me and i wanted to share it with you because i think it can help you someday too better and i want to show you how to use a multimeter on your battery so that you can test the health of your battery by yourself and you don't have to rely on somebody Else. First thing to know about all things electrical, especially when it comes to batteries and things like that, is red is always equals positive, black always equals negative. And when you're using your voltmeter, you always want to put positive to positive and negative to negative, and that's how you get your reading. So first I'm going to turn on the voltmeter. Since I have a multimeter, I need to make sure I choose the right setting. And right here is the right setting, DC. DC voltage. 12 volt batteries are always DC. AC is like 120 electrical. So turn it to DC and it's just going to 
give you weird numbers. Then you need to find your positive and your negative on your battery. Super easy. Again, usually red is positive. And there is, yeah, and the black here, you can see the black here is the negative. So super easy now. They say when you're doing electrical things, you should always hook up your positive first and then your negative. So we'll do the same thing with the battery, positive first and negative at the same time. And my battery is at 12.3 and I've been sitting here for almost a day. So that's a pretty good reading. Now testing your alternator with one person is going to be a little tricky. You're not necessarily going to get an extremely accurate reading by just uh, by yourself, but you can kind of at least tell generally how healthy it is by getting a measurement before you turn on the engine, turn on the engine, rev it up a couple times, get another reading. Should be between 13 and 14 and a half if your alternator is healthy. And once you kind of have a baseline, let it run for a few minutes. Once you have a baseline for what it is, start turning your lights on, turn your radio on, and your 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 fan, your your heat on to see and then test it again and see if it's still staying between 13 and 14 and a half. If you start turning stuff on and it starts going down below 13, then that might mean you have a problem with your alternator. Okay, okay so the engine's been running for a few minutes. I put the gas pedal, I revved it up to about 2000 RPMs and now I'm gonna test it again after I got my initial uh, reading without the engine on. but I get 14.3, 14.4. And now I'm gonna turn on the lights, the radio, and the fan, the, the heater, to see, to see if my reading changes. healthy range of a healthy alternator. Now, if you have somebody with you, it's a good idea to get inside, rev the engine up to 2000 RPMs, take a reading, making sure that your voltage is going up when you're revving the engine, and then in, it's going back down to a suitable range between 13 and 14 and a half volts when you're not revving the engine. And that'll give you a pretty good baseline indication that your alternator is probably okay. So this is just really good information to have if you ever run into a mechanic that you you know you know ahead of time if somebody's like you need a new alternator you can do some baseline tests yourself to know whether or not your alternator is healthy and just any information the more information you have about how your vehicle runs the better you're going to be able to take care of yourself in emergency situations all right so i hope you found that little experience of mine with rv troubles helpful and you learn something from my experience that's why i'm here <laughs> to hopefully save you some of the headaches and trials and tribulations that i have gone through so that i can educate you so that you can know a little bit more about your rv too i do have a lot more fun adventure how to inspiration motivation just fun carolyn type stuff coming up so if you haven't already i hope that you will subscribe to my channel today and i'll see you next time in the meantime be happy be free and be kind. I'll see you soon. Bye.